Welcome to Made in Montgomery, I'm Susan Kennedy. When you drive down Veers Mill Road in Wheaton, you'll pass a retro looking building that's been a part of the Wheaton community since the 1960s. Known by folks in the music industry as Chucks, the business first opened in 1958 in Washington, D.C., where it became known as the place to go for musicians from all parts of the United States who were visiting the D.C. area. <laughs> Today, daughter Abby, son Alan, and grandson Adam run the show here at the Washington Music Center. It wasn't just my father. My parents started the business. As my mother said, she let him put his name over the door. But if you look at any early photos, it's my dad and my mom together. Everyone knows it's Marge and Chuck Levin. Dad liked to talk to people. He loved the business, he loved music. Uh, you know, th the big superstars and the kids just starting out, he just liked to talk to people. He, you know, it, it, and he always said, music is a happy business. This was the fire on H Street. Chucks moved to Wheaton after fires from the riots following the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. destroyed the D.C. store in 1968. The community loved them and, and it was very hard for them. That's kind of what was left. Warped drum shells and um, snare drums and tom drums and kind of all that was left from the, from the fire on A Street. The store was reopened at its current location just two months later. Chuck and Marge Levin worked the store every day, and as a child, Abby and her siblings spent long hours there learning the tricks of the trade. The rule at Chuck's is a Levin must be in the building at all times. The Levin family is the Music Center family because even as kids, it was very interwoven into our lives. There was no family and store. If we wanted to see our parents, we went to work with them. And I mean, I have people who've worked for us that are here that have been with us uh, 37 years. You can't be with people that long and, and have them not be family. Adam Levin got involved in the business shortly after graduating from college with a degree in engineering. He was convinced by his father, Robert, who passed away two years ago, to give it a shot. My dad and I had an agreement that if I, st if I stayed for three years, then I, was, then I had to stay here forever. Um, and the first three years was the trial. Um, and within the first six months, I knew this was it. Chuck's is not your usual mom and pop brick and mortar shop. It's sort of a rite of passage into the world of music. Walk in and you'll see drums, keyboards, and hundreds of guitars. Some of them made by Paul Reed. This Rockville native worked at Chuck's during high school and went on to create his own label. The Washington Music Center sells more instruments on an annual basis than any other store of its kind in the United States. They offer clinics and workshops for professionals and students, and a big part of the business is instrument rental. We do about 20,000 rentals locally um, for the surrounding regions and schools, um, and then we also sell to government agencies, Army and Navy bands around the world, and extends beyond languages, it extends beyond personalities, it extends beyond region of the country, it's, it's, it's you universal. You name it, everybody wants music in their life. And there are plenty of famous people who shop at the Washington Music Center. Nils Lofgren, Doc Severinsen, and Smokey Robinson are just a few of the big names to make a stop at Chuck's. Stevie Wonder is probably the most regular of the stars. When he comes into town, he pops in the store. You'll find him in the back playing on a keyboard right alongside other customers who are doing business. Abby Levin says it's special when the stars stop by, but they don't let that distract them from the folks who stop in on a regular basis. We treat all of our customers like superstars. I think what uh, the musicians that are better known like about coming here is they can come here and just be a musician. People don't bother them. They can sit, Stevie Wonder will sit in the back in the keyboard room and play and nobody bothers him. Council member Mark Elrich is a big music fan. He follows local bands like the Nighthawks and played guitar in his own band when he was a young adult. He's made plenty of visits to Chuck's over the years. Obviously not actively playing in a rock and roll band now, but I do occasionally go there for stuff and it's just a beehive of activity. Um, I run into people I know who do play in bands. It's, um, 
it's just a place that I think everybody's viewed as a reliable um, local, they are local um, business that, you know, caters to the music community. And when Chuck Levin's children came to work for him, they weren't exactly working in high-level positions in the company. Abby joked her dad handed her a toilet brush on her first day. We were always told, you never ask your salesman to do something that they don't see you do yourself. Though Chuck Levin died in 2002, the family carries on his sound approach to customer service and making their clients feel valued. It was, the, it was, it was what Chuck did and what he taught uh, my father and Alan and Abby and kind of how that trickled down to me that, that, that I think makes this place what it is. You know, I'll, I'll go in the basement and I'll dig for a guitar pick for someone for 10 minutes and it's a, it's a 30 cent sale. And, and it's that extra, that over the top, personal touch that really defined Chuck and, and Marge. And when it's your name on the front door, you really do care about what people say or think when they walk out the door. If they have a bad experience and talk about us, they're not talking about some chain or something that doesn't affect me personally. They're talking about me. They're talking about my family. Because the depth, it doesn't get as chirpy as like the little piccolos usually do. Right, yeah. There are about 150 people who work at the Washington Music Center. One of those employees, Carl Kulos, has been at Chuck's for 37 years. His son is Chris Kulos, a homegrown musician of Chuck's. This Wooten High School graduate is the drummer for the rock band OAR. As far as the Levin family is concerned, Wheaton will continue to be home to this mecca for anyone who knows anything about music. Wheaton is a, is a melting pot and the community has been very supportive of the business since the beginning. So it's, a, it's a very different, uh, lots of different cultures, lots of different um, styles of music, lots of different walk in business. We're, we're kind of, it doesn't seem that, we don't think of Wheaton as being a very central location, but it kind of is. We're kind of in the middle of a lot of different um, cultural and, and, and business uh, areas of the, of, the, of the region. And the pride the family has in their status in the music business is certainly evident when Abby talks about the best part of carrying on the Levin legacy. One of the nicest gifts we have left behind from both Robert, my mom, and my dad, customers will still come in the store. They'll come in with their grandchildren now, but they'll have a nice story to tell me about, I remember, getting my first sax from your dad on H Street, or I didn't have the money to finish paying off my guitar, and your mom told me to just take it and you'll pay me later. And, and hopefully we're creating more good stories because that's the legacy that, that we had and that's how we were taught to treat our customers, and we want to have just more and more good stories. Like musicians, athletes need equipment, and that can sometimes get expensive, making it tough for kids to participate in youth sports. But one Montgomery County man has found a way that every kid can be a part of the team. For Maya Erd's Bat Mitzvah project, she wanted to do something for children who were less fortunate than herself. So she and her mother headed over to a Silver Spring warehouse to gather up some soccer equipment. These are size nine soccer cleats for some children in Ethiopia. I would just grab some bags and start piling stuff in there. We've been supporting a family there, a young girl really, and um, for many years, and when her bat mitzvah came up, we had decided, or Maya really had decided that she wanted to um, help, them. help them get soccer equipment because what you would tell them what you had heard about how, what they were playing. Oh, they play soccer and some of them don't, most of them don't have anything. So it's like they're just like stepping on rocks and they might have like one ball that's like flat, but that's about it. They reached out to Max Levitt, founder of Leveling the Playing Field, a nonprofit that gives underprivileged kids the chance to enjoy playing sports. It all started when Levitt was the equipment manager for the Syracuse University football team. I was, you know, I walked into the equipment room for the first time and I was like, my eyes were wide open. I couldn't believe how much stuff was surrounding me. And then, you know, the, 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 the crazy thing was at the end of the season, 
my boss would literally tell me and my coworkers to throw away everything that was in the equipment room. Why? Well, because we're getting $3 million worth of brand new Nike gear every single year. When it comes in in August for the football season, where do we put it on the shelves, right? There's no room on the shelves for anything. That's you know how many of these we get? I, how many? Probably 100 plus. Levitt also spent his summers working for the Montgomery County Department of Recreation where there was no shortage of gear and much of it sat unused. If you look at this, I mean, 90% of this stuff comes from individual families. And then there were his friends who had long since graduated from college and their sports gear was still sitting in their parents' garage. So I started thinking, gosh, this is... This is kind of big. I mean, there is a huge amount of sporting equipment in, this, in society that is just sitting around gathering dust or being thrown away. And, you know, again, what do you do with it? Thanks for uh, taking the interest. So what sports do you play? When I found out that a growing number of kids weren't playing sports and one of the major factors was equipment, to me it was like, well, duh, right? So let's talk about lacrosse. What's, what equipment do you need for lacrosse? Unfortunately, for a lot of families, it's really hard to to provide that equipment for their, for their daughter. And if there is mass amounts of equipment sitting in our community that's going to waste or being thrown away, and at the same time, sometimes a mile away, there's a kid coming home and asking his parents if he can play baseball, and after looking at DickSportingGoods.com, the parents come back and say, absolutely not. Yeah. This is an obvious solution. Today, leveling the playing field has enlisted more than 500 volunteers and in the last three years has donated more than $1.4 million in equipment to more than 250 programs across the region. This is from the National Football League who called us last week and had some gear sitting around there looking to give away to a charity and wanted to know if they could just ship it on over to us. Levitt receives boxes of new and used equipment on a daily basis. Some, I mean, this is this is like as nice a clean as you're gonna find for football. Brand new. You got some non-printed NFL jerseys. The organization has partnered with DC United and the Capitals, and recently had its first hockey equipment distribution. Levitt says there is a process to receiving an equipment grant for leveling the playing field and he pays a visit to every program they make a donation to. And once they're accepted into our program, the great thing is, is our doors are open to them. Because if we're doing our jobs right, their sports program, their opportunities are, are growing. The county has been a big supporter of this nonprofit, awarding grant funding which helped Levitt secure the warehouse he currently operates from. Councilmember Hans Reamer has two young sons. <laughs> one of whom plays baseball. He says organizations like Levitt's help the community bridge the gap when the high cost of participating in youth sports prevents a child from being a part of a team. A lot of kids don't have that money at home. They have trouble raising that money to make a team. That's why I just love this leveling the playing field idea that you know you might be done with your glove, you know your bat might be too small this year, but there's a lot of kids out there that can use that equipment. Don't let it sit in the closet. You know, don't just put it on the basement and uh, let it just collect dust. Let some other kids play with it. The demand for what we're doing is growing almost monthly. We have 250 programs, many of which come in here on, you know, we have people in here every day getting equipment for their programs, odds and ends. Um, that's pretty typical for us, so it's, it's only going to grow. This 27-year-old wants to eventually bring his business model to more cities. He says it's a no-brainer, that it makes perfect sense. I don't aspire to run a local charity. I don't. I aspire to run a national charity. I don't see why this can't become like a Toys for Tots. I mean, this, is, this has been done before. You know, we've already proven that, that this works, that this helps kids get involved in athletics. We've done it to over 80,000 kids in three years, almost four years, with one person and only two people for the last eight months. It's not, hard to, it's not hard to pull off. This simple idea where just a ball or a glove can mean a child gets an opportunity. And one of the things you wanted to do was make a donation. Yeah. So oh, thank you. Please. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And this is from her. And thank you very much. Truly. Appreciate it. Okay, yeah, spread the word. Spread the word. You know, I got to play every sport I wanted to growing up. I had every opportunity to drop to my feet, whether it was sports or a tutor because I wasn't good at math or a speech pathologist when I was young. I mean, I was given every opportunity to be successful. Thank you. Oh, thank you, appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. You got thank it. Thank you. I'm hoping to see you guys again. Thank you. You'll see us again. So those are two companies that beat to a different drum, but both contribute in the same way to make Montgomery County a great place to do business. For County Cable Montgomery, I'm Susan Kennedy. Thanks for watching.